Alright, hello everybody. Um, today I'm doing avocados. One of my favorite. Well, I like avocados and I like guacamole. I don't have it that often, but I figured it'd be a fun painting. So, um, a lot of my favorite colors of green are in this. So I'm excited to show you how to do it. As always, we're going to start with the background. Big brush. Whatever size that you like. This is a 12 by 12 canvas, so it's a little bit smaller. And so I'm going to use a smaller brush to start with. Whatever size you like, you know, feel free to do. I'm pretty much going to stick with these colors here. Yellow, blue, white, brown, and black. Um, I have other videos where I have described how to make brown if you don't have it. Um, but I'll probably, I can also go over this one as well. I won't have, what it is is you make green and you make red. Or you have red, my bad. You don't make red, you have red. Um, you take green and red to make a brown. Uh, it's, it's one variation. You could take red and blue to make a brown. You can take red and black to make a brown. Um, you can really kind of play around, even add a little bit of yellow to lighten it up if you need. Um, it's a lot of ways to make brown. But if you have your primaries, you got your red, your blue, your yellow, and then you have your white and your black, you can make pretty much anything. So, you can even make orange, orange and red, make variations of, of brown. Um, so yeah, you can really, you can really just go for it there, but I'm going to stick with what I have on my plate here. I got a dark brown. And what I'm going to start with is probably a light, a light brown here. So, I'm going to take my brown and my white. Apologize, I don't have this painted already. I'm starting to run low on my canvases, so I'm going to be a little more sparing of them. And while I am figuring out where I'm going to get more from. <laughs> Add a little bit of yellow to this. Just a little bit. Yeah, so I want something just really, really light. So, after I made this mixture, I'm going to wipe it off on my towel. I'm going to add white to my brush. Get a little bit of that color on there. And what I want to do actually is, I'm going to spread it between these two lines. Yes, that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep the bottom something else later. So you can kind of choose if you're going to do this, or plan on doing this, or you're doing this now, or however. Um, you can do the background however you'd like. You can make it bright and vivid with pink. Uh, you can make it real soft with brown. You can make it just white. If you do cover it in white, definitely, definitely do that. Like, cover it in your white paint. It is very important to cover all canvas when you're painting, even if it's white. So... I'm just going to go ahead and kind of spread this around. It's real free. I don't really want any specific thing happening. I really just want it to be a little bit of everything going on here. Even if it's a little strokey everywhere. I chose brown because there's going to be a lot of green going on you know, with, with the avocados. So I don't really want something that's going to blend with them. I really want something that's going set, to set apart from them. And I'm just adding different colors as I go white and brown and white and brown and maybe a little bit of yellow here and there. But mainly white and brown. Kind of at an angle here. I like angles.
if my camera cuts out, I apologize, and I will be right back on if it does. I don't know what's up with the connection here. Do a lot of dry brushing. Um, I don't really want this to be thick. I want it to dry pretty quickly so that I can put things over top of it. So I'm just really scrubbing it all in. Never a dull moment outside, there's always something going on down the street. As you see, I, I'm pretty much just adding real sparingly here. I'm not trying to overdo it. The brush is not super wet, it's just slightly. So definitely give your hand and your arm a workout. Alright, so I like this background. I'm gonna let it dry. We're gonna mix another color here, and I really like this teal I'm about to make. It's a teal and a blue coming together to make some really nice colors happen. So, let's see. Taking the blue and the yellow. More blue than yellow. A lot more blue than yellow. Yeah, that's about where it is. I'm gonna add this on the top and on the bottom. Some people will wait and they'll tape this across to get a straight line. I really don't want to deal with any straight lines. Um, that's a little too in the box for me. But if you like to do that, feel free to do so. And as I'm going along here, I'm just going to add blue. Not really sure what's back here, but 
definitely something. I really wanted this to be open and, and free today, so... Nothing too constricting on ideas and paintings, just kind of... Just kind of going for something. Same thing down at the bottom. Like I said, you can make whatever kind of background you want, what kind of colors you like. You could do purples, you could do pinks, you could do yellows, you could do, you know, white browns like I did whatever it is that if you're gonna hang this up will match the area it's going to be hanging in or just speaks out to you as an individual go with that if you only have the primary colors you know the yellow the red blue uh, red and yellow make orange um, red and blue do a lot of different things so usually I will say get pink or make a pink with the red and then mix it with the blue lightly and uh, you'll get some variations of purple um, blue and yellow make green I think I said that but I'm not sure <laughs> but um, as you go along making more colors and you mix different things together, they're gonna make other things as well. So it's a good experimentation. I don't know if that's a word, but it's the one that I used. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hit the edges here with this color while I have it. If you ever, you know, if you wanna lighten it up, you can add white. If you want to brighten it up, you can add yellow. Always know the difference between lightening and brightening. brightening. Yellow is a brightener, and it gives you kind of that sour feel, whereas white takes it up to a lighter, a lighter hue, and it kind of tones it down, tones it back a little bit. I almost have a sense of, of taste when I look at colors. I don't know. It's it's interesting. <laughs> But um, I really honestly keep this light, you know, if you're going to do that, just because the uh, avocados, they're going to be pretty, pretty vivid, somewhat. So you don't really want your eye to be conflicted with so many colors everywhere. All right, so the back is pretty much dry, but I'm going to go ahead and hit these edges, let it dry the last remaining bit. And just continue with the direction I was going along the edges. I'll show you another step actually as well if, if anybody would want to do this kind of give some depth to the difference between the two colors that are happening right there how they're colliding there's a way to do that it's real simple So if you wanted to bring kind of a shadow into it, 
really could. I would take maybe a dark brown. And just go along the edges here. And dry brush that in just like I have been doing pretty much. To leave this idea of a gap between the two areas. Maybe this is something over top of something that's like a wood grain or, or something like that. Maybe this is on a chopping board. And you can add that to actually both sides. So you can do it up top. I'm gonna flip this around. Make it easier for myself. I'm just staying on the very edge of those bristles. Carefully dragging it across. Lawnmower hit something out there. That's not good. A little bit of a shadow so that it looks like it's over top of, maybe it's a cutting board or something, I don't know. But we'll go with that. This is the idea of a cutting board. And maybe there's something over top of it at the, on each end to make the cutting easier. <laughs> and you can detail your board however you like. You can always add more over top. Like I said, I was uh, letting this dry. <laughs> Let me hit this top, and then it should be good to go. Very, very good. I'm gonna take a trip down to a smaller brush now so I can start the avocados. I am so excited about this. All right, so seeing that I am on a limited amount of colors here, I don't have greens yet. I don't have, uh, you know, dark greens. I don't have light greens. I don't have any. I just have a teal that I've been working with. Um, I'm gonna take and use the principles with blue and yellow and white that um, I always talk about. I really uh, kind of honing on that today. So my very first color that I want to deal with is probably going to be the dark green because I want to put that avocado in the back. So I know where I'm going to place the two that are uh, ahead of it. Well, the one that's cut in half ahead of it. <laughs> so. I'm gonna make a dark green. I'm gonna take blue and yellow. And I'm gonna go against a lot of things that I talk about all the time. And I'm gonna add some black. <laughs> Cause this is a dark, dark, dark green that we need. Very, almost all of the real icky green. I mean, it's not icky. I like it. It's gonna be very dark green. It's probably gonna need to be even darker than that. So when it comes on the canvas here, it's gonna lighten up a little bit. So, seeing that I have it pretty much kind of centered, I'm gonna go with that. So this one's gonna come here. And I'm actually gonna finish, I think, the whole avocado there, just so I, I can keep everything in line with how this is going to work. So I almost feel like these are slightly the shape of a pear. 
When I run out, I just add blue and yellow to come back in here with more color because there's already going to be a lot of dark color from the black. Black's a heavy color. So from here, I like to build up with the colors instead of keep adding black and keep going super duper dark. When it calls for that, you can do that. But this painting really doesn't. This, this part of this painting does not call for continuing to hit the black. Not yet. When you see it get too bright, that's when you can grab a pinch again but I would only grab a pinch I don't I don't want a whole lot it's very 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 heavy very bold very dominant color and when I'm working inside of the avocado I like to stick with the directions that I took so if it's rounded it's gonna stay round I'm not gonna go straight up and down I always like to keep it around even if I have to trail it, you know, completely with this kind of smiley face idea where that's how the brush is, is stroking like a smiley face to keep it round, even if I have to go frowny face up here. That is fine. I don't want to go straight across. When you do that, it's just flattening everything out and you can definitely tell the difference and um, realize it's just there's there's something wrong. It's not working. So whatever direction that you take, you know, just don't make it straight. Stay across. Like I said, this can go darker. I always like to stick with something lighter before I go darker. So um, maybe I'll start even adding brown instead of black. I will also darken it nicely and not be overbearing. Now if you do happen to take motions that are not curvy, you can always come back with your brush after you set it down um, and make those curvy motions. Alright, so this is not dark enough. We're gonna add a little bit of black here. And now I'm gonna stick with, with, with a black, but not too much, not too heavy at all. Just ever so slightly, just bringing it down. And at any point, I'm leaving myself enough room that I can dip back into a blue and a yellow or the mixture that I made and bring the tones back that I need. Also keep in mind that I'm probably not going to see most of this on the bottom. <clears throat> it's going to be covered up by the other avocados. And if anybody didn't see, the um, example is over, over here. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that is what I'm basing it off of. But once you have, you know, you're mixing down and you, you've got the, your colors down that you go to, um, this should not be a difficult feat. You, you honestly just automatically kind of jump into exactly what you need, kind of second nature. Then if you wanted to add some kind of texture to it, you can always just kind of splotch. Splotch some of this um, green. If you like, because we're gonna get a little artsy with this one here. I'm not gonna keep it super realistic. I'm gonna get a little artsy. I'm gonna add some yellow. I'm 
can be slightly bright. While we're at it, we're going to darken some areas here. Probably around here. And maybe light in some areas with some white on the other side. Just to bring it out a little bit more. So we got avocado number one, the body. I'm not really gonna mess with it too much more at the moment. I might come back later and sharpen it up more. But until I know where everything else is, I don't wanna do that just yet. I do, however, wanna do a little bit of a stem. So I'm gonna take some yellow and blue again. Yellow and blue is gonna be making all the greens. I'm gonna make a brighter green for the stem. I'm just gonna come, come out here. Just a line, just a kind of partially thick line. And to the side that's dark, you can add more dark. To the side that's light, you can add a little bit of light. And you can do that one of two ways. You can add white or you can add yellow. I might go with some yellow. Just kind of blend that in. From there, it's gonna be another kind of stem for the leaf. It's the same kind of technique pretty much, so dark on the bottom, lighter on the top. It's already light on the top here because I did yellow. It's kind of hard to see, but um, it's pretty light up there already. So I'm not really going to mess with that anymore. I'm going to add this leaf. It's going to be another variation of green. Um, I like a lot of different greens. When I'm working with a lot of green as it is. So you can really mix up these colors that you're using. Draw out a leaf. Don't be afraid to do a few different um, colors on your leaf. You can never go wrong with that. Let's see, maybe I'll do a dark green for the veins. almost looks black but it is dark green I don't really want to use black on on this leaf it's it's more of a, a nature deal and um, and not so heavy I don't want it so heavy and when all else fills with a small brush go to a smaller brush so I'm gonna take my real tiny brush here Make it, uh, this dark green again. Blue, yellow, a little bit of black. Yellow and black also makes a really nice kind of dark. It can make almost a gold, it can make a green, um, or the idea of a green. And we're just going to follow these down. Even if I don't see the lines that well, that's all right. If 
if you really wanted to get technical, you can take your dark green, and you can actually kind of splotch it underneath these lines to bring the leaf out some more, and the veins and everything's going on with with your leaf. You can make it darker on the bottom. You can make it lighter on the top with some yellow. There's a lot of details you can do to a leaf. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. Just hearing it, you'd have to see it. But I have a rose that I did real crazy detail on on a leaf. I'm not gonna spend that kind of time on this one. But it's always doable. It's always something that can be done. You can throw a little bit of you know, light in here too. Let's bring that leaf out a little bit more. All right. So let's let's do um, avocado slice number one. This is gonna be the next one coming forward, which will be the one with the hole um, that does not have the seed and now I'm gonna mix another green <laughs> this is probably gonna be a never-ending process of mixing different greens this one's gonna be really pale so I start by just making a green you can you can really choose you know if you want to go with a regular green and then lighten that or if you want to make almost a teal and lighten that it's more like a peppermint uh, color I would think um, almost like the shamrock shake you know the color of the shamrock shake is that I, I imagine that as being kind of a pepperminty um, almost a, a mount or a honeydew melon kind of color whereas if you just use a, a regular green um, slightly does that but not not quite as much so this is real dark. I, I need this to be really light. So if I continue to mix here, it's just going to continue to be this color. So I'm going to actually take what's on my brush and take it over to the white a little bit. And I'm just going to add white to it to take it up higher. And now you can see the difference. You know, real dark, real light. If you ever find yourself in a mixing conundrum where it's not changing, that's probably why is you're just mixing the same color it's not going to change you have too much of that that color there so you just take it off to the side and take it um see if you can dry the brush off a little bit on your towel and then add whatever color it is you're mixing to it then it'll start to change again but let's see so this one i'm gonna do kind of the same thing same shape really gonna have to lighten this up but that's okay I'm gonna make that work this one's gonna be ahead of that one this gonna be a slightly bigger all right I'm just gonna add white in here now because it's so dark <laughs> I don't want it that dark I really want to lighten it up I hesitate to add yellow, but I might add a little bit of yellow. This here, it can be flat because it is a flat part, if that makes sense. So, you know, it's not going to round off like the actual whole fruit does where it is actually spherical it's it's really gonna stay flat so you can just follow these around if you want keep it flat but I would still follow that direction all the way around I really wouldn't leave that um, I wouldn't just go straight up and down <laughs> Shapes are so important. Shapes, when you start to understand how important shapes are, they're the reason why different styles happen, 
the, the reason why, you know, people really hone in on their shapes and how they make the shapes. And, um, you know, it starts to actually stick out and people start to ask, you know, what is it that you're doing to achieve this? And I feel like shapes are very important to that. And I used to be really overwhelmed by shape, thinking about shapes and, you know, I thought they were boring. <laughs> But they really make such a difference. So if you ever want to hone in on anything specifically, think about the shapes. Think about the curves of the thing that you're looking at, that you're trying to achieve. Think about the direction. I might have to let this dry before I, I continue to add to lighten this up. Because just like mixing on the plate, if this you know isn't dry enough, you're just going to continue to make the same color over and over again when you're trying to make it lighter. So I'll let that dry a little bit. I'm going to come down here to the bottom and add um, that uh, bottom portion after I take off this mistake I just made. <laughs> Which I am actually going to use that later, but for now, I'm not ready for that. See if I have a dry part of this towel I can use. Never make a mistake. Water takes it off. Uh, towel that's damp will take it off. Acrylic, acrylic comes right off. So, you know, that's why if you ever walk in the rain with your canvas and it's not sprayed with any protectant, or sealant or anything like that um, it's fine as long as you don't touch it <laughs> okay so while this is rudely interrupting me here let me fix this area go back what was there I'm gonna tamper with all this later so I'm not really worried about that but let's make this dark green again Blue, yellow, a little bit of black, dark, dark, dark green. And it is going to come from here. I wanted to kind of take some of this. Let me add some more black here. Notice I'm not going straight across. Definitely taking this shape around. All right. Now there's that piece. I have to let the inside dry a little bit before I add any more details there, but um, let me come now to this one that's going to be about here. Start adding that in. I'm going to lighten up this green some more. I really want that to be light. Okay, so this one. This one's going to the same shape it's just gonna be kind of crooked here now a little bit it's gonna go over top of that it's definitely an interesting shape and now the bright green is gonna stay in here
dark green. going to happen around here. Gonna take it darker as I go. So now we got our three pieces of um, avocado on the canvas. And it is all downhill from here. <laughs> Add a little bit of yellow now to this mixture here. Try to have a little bit. really trying to set things in place where they're gonna go and I have to let some of this dry a little bit so in the meantime let's go back here to this guy we're gonna add some black for sure so a little bit not a whole lot and around where this avocado meets is where we're gonna put a shadow to separate them more so here. We don't want things to look flat against each other. We want them to kind of balance out and really add the depth, the layers. And now because this one's closer than this one, we're gonna do a smaller shadow along the line here. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. I always want to take size and um, how close things are into consideration. I might make this a little bit larger here. I might add, you know, for the artsiness of it, again, a little bit of yellow. Yellow is going to disappear into dark colors when it's as thin as mine is, so I might have to do it a couple times. Same thing with, you know, if you want to lighten up the side again. Might just add a little bit more there. A little bit go goes a long way, so don't ever overdo it. If you're not sure, just add a little bit at a time. See this this I'm gonna have to spread out. It's gonna take more than you would anticipate. Awesome. You can do the same to the leaf if you really wanted. You can add yellow up here again. Go in between the veins. You can even add a little bit of white. Since there's a little bit going on there, it doesn't hurt to do some in you know, some other places here. So maybe along the stem, maybe along this other stem ever so slightly. Maybe along the leaves just a little bit. Maybe along the vein, even. This brings it out a little bit more. And I don't want to follow just the entire trail. I will skip some spots and come back to another spot and add some more. So now, while well, these are still drying, because they still are, <laughs> um, I do want to add just a little bit more of this dark color around here. It's trailing off, it's not just disappearing. 
There you go. But I also want to add shadows underneath these avocados. So I don't want to take green or dark green or anything like that. I don't really want to take black just yet. Uh, if it even calls for it, we'll see. But I want to take dark brown because I'm on a brown background. So this is light brown. What I'll do is I'll take this dark brown and start with that to make this shadow the same exact way you do with the avocado back here. You do with this one up here. They might be kind of standing up a little bit, so I'm not going to cover the entire area around it. I'm just going to kind of let them stand. Same thing down here. <clears throat> because this one's further ahead, it'll be a bigger shadow here. So I'm going to dry off my brush now. And try to push those in. come up a little bit higher here once you have the feel for your paint you'll understand exactly how to work it with this some are thinner some are thicker so knowing your paint really is important you can see that brings it right out that brings it to it almost looks like it has a 3D, 3D or, or more 2D going to a 3D kind of texture. So shading really can make that happen very quickly. But I have to plug in my device here. I forgot to do that. Yep, here we go. You don't want the camera dying on me. <laughs> All right, awesome. We are charging. So like I said before, you know, whatever color background, whatever color, you know, up here that you want to do, if you just want to do the whole background with that, you can. Uh, same with your avocados, you know, if you want to stick with any type of avocado, like painting you've seen, or the avocado itself, or whatever it is that really um, melts with your, your mind to, to make this, if you, if you want to do this, um, stick with those colors. Uh, I like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take these higher and everything, but... I'm going for a certain scheme that I like, so that's not the same for everybody. Feel free to make your own. I'm just here to show you the steps that I take to achieve the subject. But colors, colors are theory like music. You can make whatever kind of music you want, you can make what kind of colors you want. I'm gonna start to edge in the seed. If you like a brighter brown than this, you can you can use a brighter brown. You can um, add red. Red makes it more interesting. I don't have red on my um, swatch here, but I don't. So just rounding, rounding this off. I'm not going to go straight across. I am also going to round down here a little bit. Stay with that, that motion. Goes in. Okay, this is drying up a little bit. I'm going to let that dry now a little bit so I can... Um, work with it this is real wet I'm gonna start working down here a little more um, I don't want white <laughs> I actually want to go with some real dark green so black and yellow is all I'm gonna stick with right now I'm gonna add the black and the yellow yeah there we go you can see it's not just it's really is it's kind of going green and that's the cool thing about black and yellow I never 
thought about this until somebody that I met that came into my studio showed me a painting he did. Um, and he said he used black and yellow, and I was like, oh, I did not know you could do that. And with this, I really want to stay lines. I don't want to have anything that's not... Um, I don't want anything to not be connected to the ground here. I really want that to be a solid base now. So I'm even going to go darker. As it's coming closer, you know, it's going to get darker down here. Just going to keep mixing that in. A little bit of black at a time, not a lot. I'm going to use what's on the canvas, drag it out. really makes a difference. You can be as heavy or as light with this as you want. I mean, if you like, if you like where it's at, where it's real light, and, you know, that's your style, stick with that. But if you want to take it further, like I am here, um, you always can do that too. Pay attention to how you feel about it. And if you're not a, a feeling um, painter, then pay attention how you think about it, or whatever it is your process is, whatever tells you to stop or to go, listen to that. I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow now up here. Yellow is gonna keep this from getting dull and uninteresting to look at, so love to use the yellow for this painting here <laughs> and for this area here I'm gonna take a smaller brush now and bring it around I was just thinking I want to shade. I'm going to shade along here, but it's not all going to be with the black. Um, I'm actually going to use the black down here where it's really dark to shade it there. It's going to come to the same point that this shadow is. But it's not going to be that dark all the way across. It's going to be at about the same, same idea. Now, instead of using black up here around, I'm going to use a darker green doesn't have to be incredibly dark, it just needs to be darker. Well, it needs to be darker than that. <laughs> so I'm adding blue. I don't want to go into the black, I just want to add blue and make it darker that way before I add anything else. You could add, you know, a slight bit of brown from there. Black is too extreme. We don't want to go extreme. We just want a subtle thing here. These are things I was never shown, per se, um, or maybe I didn't pick it up when they were shown, I don't know. These are things that I used to wish um, I could understand when it came to shading and, and all, that kind of, all that kind of stuff. That was the missing piece to a lot of my artwork back when I was drawing a lot, was shading and understanding how it works. So really excited to be able to show kind of how I picked it up. And see if that helps anybody who maybe feels the way that I did. Yeah, that's really wet still. So, it's not going to do exactly what I need just yet. But it's starting to. It's starting to get dark where I needed to get dark. Kind of want to go a little bit lighter up here. So a little bit of yellow for sure. And then this light green that I made earlier. Super light green. I was telling myself the entire time I was looking at avocado, I don't want a whole lot of yellow. I like the light green with a tinge of the yellow. I don't want to go just full blast yellows. So I'm going to lighten this up. <laughs> if 
that's your thing, go with it. It is not my thing, so I'm not going to go with that. I use what's on my canvas. I don't dip too much. If you start dipping way too much, uh, you're going to just keep getting the canvas way too wet to work on. It's never going to dry for a long time. And you'll also be battling yourself, trying to get it to cooperate. And it's not going to cooperate. <laughs> there we go. I like that. That's not too bad. That's real subtle. I'm not trying to overcomplicate this either today. I really wanted to make this pretty simple. Stay, stay on the more simple side. <laughs> All right. I think I'm gonna add a little brown, a little bit of brown and yellow now. I'm gonna start adding that up here. A little bit of white. Since white is not um, along the lines of the brown, I felt like it was all right to add now. Let me see if I can make a little bit of dark brown with a little bit of black. I don't. I don't like to go in when I'm doing shading with just black. I it's unless it's needed, like here. You know, the avocado skin is already really dark. You can do that other areas I really don't I don't like to just use black it's so um it really I feel like it secludes other other areas that could be developed and looked at so again around here I'm gonna shade but I'm not gonna use black I'm going to use just a darker green than this. It's not going to be that dark, but it's going to be darker than this. And it might reflect a little bit of the brown, so maybe it'll be slightly darker. I don't know. Um, sometimes I don't know how to explain what I'm doing, <laughs> and I do something else. But um, it's definitely going to be a mixture of the green and maybe a little bit of brown. Down here. All right, so it is darker than up here. But that's because of the brown seed that we see here. Reflecting just a little bit of that. You could even take a little bit of brown up against it. This is going to show that it's not just flat inside of the avocado. It's actually going to start bringing it out. doesn't need to be crazy or you know too heavy but up against the avocado is going to be the darkest area so right up against here I am going to go darker but still not that dark not as dark as the dark on the avocado it's going to be a little darker than the shading that was outside here awesome And you know, it's up to you if you want to keep lightening the top here, you can. Keep aware of how wet your paint is up here. Like I said, you're going to make it a struggle for yourself. I might leave that as is. I might, I don't know, I kind of like that. I would like to add some more kind of to this idea. I textured up here. I want to texture all this too. So I'm going to do the same thing I did in the first place, um, but with black and yellow this time. I'm just going to splotch. If you need to move down to different size brushes to do this, feel free. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Okay. I'm actually just gonna take a little bit of this off. This is good practice for if you need to erase anything. It's always it's always available to do so. Just remember to put stuff back that was there. Um, now I don't necessarily recommend this if you have an entire sky and then you put trees all over the sky. I would not recommend to tamper with the sky at that point, um, unless you absolutely know what you're doing because uh, that can become hairy. And I mean, when you're adding, you want to take into consideration when you add paint, again, it's going to look way different until it dries. So right now, this is going to be, oh, very noticeable. But when it dries, not so much. And add a little bit more shadow right there. Definitely a little bit more along here. This brown is very thin, so... It looks dark until it dries, and then it gets real light. Alright. Let me add some more up here. Awesome. Alright, so let me go to the other side here. I'm gonna lighten this up. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna not make myself work harder here. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the inside of the hole that is left from opening up the avocado. So a light color first, just going in a circular motion. Try to keep it the same um, size as the seed. And I come into the shadow a little bit, that's okay. Keep that real round. I want that to be real rounded on the inside. Okay, so it looks like a flat circle right now. Cool. That's all right. Um, because we're going to add details here. So, whatever kind of shadow you want to add, it's totally up to you. If you want to go with the dark green, or you want to go with... A little bit of the brown and the dark green like I did underneath the avocado here. You could do that. Um, I might mix a little bit of yellow into that. And just start with something, just something different. It's going to start with almost a moon shape along here that's darker. But I don't want that line to be showing. I really want to fizzle that out. There we go. If you have to go a little darker, you always can. So you leave yourself some room. You can go a little darker in there. Cool. That starts to show almost that dip that's going down in there. And you guessed it, on the other side, we're going to lighten it up a little bit. So white is what I'm going to start with. Lighten this side up. If it'll let me. It's still a little bit wet. And I can really see it's it's really kinda starting to dip even more. It's very good. Over here, the light. Go even lighter, maybe a little bit. Apologize if that interrupted the podcast here, but or the <laughs> live feed, my bad. Uh, but I'm back. <laughs> Had someone calling. I thought I put my thing on do not disturb, and I apologize to who was calling that I cannot answer. But um, I thought that would work. I guess it doesn't.
Okay, so we're getting we're getting deep here. Very good. I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker just along here. Just a little bit. See if I can get it deeper. Got a little bit deeper, yeah. Alright. Not too deep. Just a little bit. So that's the inside of the avocado there. It is really just a mixture of light to medium to dark. Um, and uh, making sure that there's no, there aren't any lines that are just dividing it. You really want to blend them out. And you really want to keep that direction, keep that circular motion. If you just kept it straight across, it really wouldn't convey, it wouldn't convey it correctly. So always make sure that direction, the shape, those are important. Like I was saying earlier, very important. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a dark green. So I'm going to mix a little bit of a brown, blue, yellow, maybe slightly black. You just want a nice kind of dark green. Even if it's just blue and yellow that you do and it's regular green, that's fine. But this is along that line. I'm going to take a smaller brush and do this. Okay, let's see if this will cooperate with me. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of coming around here. It's going to show that um, division kind of between the skin. And then another layer that's after the skin and then the very, you know, flesh of the avocado, which is really weird to say. <laughs> again, I'm going to lighten all of this again. I don't really like this green on here. I really want to lighten that up a little bit more. So it matches more with this over here. Um, but this is, I don't know. It's not a color that speaks to me at the moment with, with this painting. Maybe a smaller line over there. We don't want that to be the same size since it's further back that way. Okay, it's gonna be noticeable once, <laughs> once I brighten this up a little bit more. I know right now it's gonna look like, what is that? But it will make sense. Okay, so I'm gonna stay along along this line that I just made. Make that difficult for myself. Why not? <laughs> so another way to thin out lines actually is you put a line down and then you stay up against it wherever it is that you want to keep uh, carry it to to make it thinner it's a very good way to do it very um it feels pretty accurate might not add the yellow to this side it's the only thing might keep that on the closer version here but i'm gonna keep this just brighter over here or lighter over here And I am going to have to put that shadow back in. And I'm also going to have to kind of widen this a little bit more. It's about there. Cool. Now it feels a little awkward here so I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out here um back in this dark 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 color I think I can add just a little bit of a space right there maybe a little bit more
definitely is not so flat looking. I don't, I don't like when things are too flat. So that means, since that's there, I am going to have to shade a little bit more up this way. Just to keep everything in line. such a thin brown. Okay. Cool. So again, shading. Don't forget that when you change something, remain consistent. Again, I am not going to stick with the same color. I'm not going to do green down this way. I'm going to do black. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, so now, because these are shaded, this guy needs some shading so that he's not just, you know, I know that we added details and everything around, but we're also going to add some shading to really finish that off. But let me add a little bit of light on this side over here, just like we did over here, a little bit, just to keep everything going in line. I run out of terms a lot of the time, so I probably say a lot of the same things over and over. I apologize. Okay, Sometimes it's a little too much. You don't see it until you step away for a second. I don't want it that dark. But I do want it darker. Up against it. Cool. Okay, so the shading of the back. I'm actually going to do it on this side since the light's, you know, hidden on that side. I'm going to do the shade over here. Also, I did the shade along that side around here and around here pretty much even though you know i hit a little bit there i'm gonna stick on that side for the back and i might not actually touch that well maybe i will the darkest area depending on how close it is and this i'm gonna say is pretty close so Darkest area is going to be right behind where the avocado starts. And from there is where I drag out the rest of the shade. It's the outskirts of the shading. Also free to use a little bit of a darker color there. So I'm going to add some black to my brown and just throw that in. Since it's the closest of all of them to what it's sitting on. Or maybe that's a, I don't know, in this painting. <laughs> closest to what it is by there. A little bit of white here.
I like the add and uh, brush kind of technique. I guess I call it that. The add and brush where I take, uh, you know, a little bit of paint and throw it on, dry off the brush, and use what's on the canvas to do the work. Alright, so there was one final kind of thing that I wanted to do here to make it more, um, I guess artistic in a way. Uh, just have fun with it. But let me do one more thing here. I don't like how light this back here got, so I'm going to darken a little bit more. The avocado skin is very dark. Yo. Need that to be super dark. That feels much better. Yeah. And I might add a little bit more of the dark in here. And right up against it here. Yeah. But also, I forgot to splotch. Like I did on the other two, I want to splotch some texture on this guy. Okay, so what I was thinking for um, something fun here, I like, I saw this picture where it's almost like they were dripping, um, almost like just streams coming down to make it real, real artistic. So I wanted to add, I don't know what you call that, but I wanted to add um, a little bit of that to this. I'm going to show how you go about doing something like that. I'm going to take a brush, probably start with a smaller brush. Um, and this requires water, and it will probably get a little messy. So um, what I want to do is I want to take different colors that are in different places. Maybe I'll take the darks and I'll let those drip, and I'll take some lights up here and let those drip. Maybe take some brown, let it drip. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to start with, I think... Uh, I start with the darks. I'm gonna take some black, some brown, some of this green. So blue and yellow. If you don't have any more of that, I just want a really, really, really dark color. But I don't want it to be just black. I want some different things. And I'm gonna take a lot of water, and I'm gonna place it and let it kind of drip. It's a good mixture of water and paint. I'm just gonna let it do what it does. I don't, I don't care if it runs off the canvas or whatever. If it gets messy down, it, I don't. It's that's a part of this. This is an optional thing if you're following along and doing this. You don't have to do this step. It's just something I wanted to do. Okay, so I got a lot of the bottom there. Maybe I'll do one more um, going upwards here. It's all going to trail down the same direction here. Hopefully this will show up as I'm intending later on. If not, I can always do it again. Uh, but now I'm going to take a lighter color and do the same thing. So white, blue, yellow. I'm going to let this trail down from here. That was a lot of paint there. You can even paint it in there a little bit if you want. It's 
same thing over here. I'm gonna do some brown for the uh, seed that's there. Then we get some more. Uh, even yellow. I'm gonna do a little, little bit of yellow here for an area like like this. Let that drop down. Do some things. Probably not everybody's gonna care for th for this here, but something I wanted to try out. I get some more of this dark color a little bit. Cool. I like that. Um, but yeah, so that's an optional step. Um, however, that is the painting, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign this. Bottom right hand corner. My initials. I'm gonna do a couple edges here before I take off, but um, thank y'all for watching. And um, I'll keep everyone posted on what's next, what's happening next, when it's happening. Like I said, I'm doing dealing down on my canvases, so I gotta watch what I do. And until I figure out where I'm getting more from. But let me know if you have suggestions. Let me know if you have certain things you want me to touch on that maybe you saw that I didn't cover. That I did or that I didn't do. Um, keep me updated if you if you paint these different um, things that I've painted. I want to see. But until next time, I will see you all later.